So I chose to do my presentation, my video on cooking. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about how I like to cook and how I use it as a tool to help cope with my stress. And with me here, I have my little puppy, Frankie. I thought I would include her in this video because puppies help with stress. So if anybody's stressed today, you could just look at Frankie. So as a little background of how I came to enjoy cooking and how I kind of got into it is I always loved to bake. Um, when I was little, I always baked with my grandma and so I learned to love it. Um, and it's one of my favorite things because I love baking for my family and my friends. I've always loved being able to bake treats, whether it be like around Christmas time, do Christmas baking or just any occasion for birthdays, whatever. And being able to kind of celebrate and eat it with my family or give it to my friends, eat it with them. I've all just always really liked that. And I've never been as good of a cook as I am a baker. Um, but just recently I've been getting more into cooking and practicing because that's kind of a more practical skill to have in life. So I've been wanting to improve my cooking skills. One of the main reasons that I've always loved baking and I'm starting to really enjoy cooking is because I find you really have to focus on that one task that you're doing. Um, cause I find like in my day to day life, my mind's always kind of wandering and I'm always thinking about a bunch of different things. But when I'm cooking, for example, I, if I let my mind wander and if I get distracted, then I'll mess up my recipe. I also just really like cooking because I just think it's fun. Um, I like being able to, if I feel like a certain food and I can just go out, get the stuff and make it easily. So I think that's, um, a big benefit of it. And I also really like cooking for other people. So whether it's cooking dinner for my family, having it ready when my parents get home from work or cooking for friends, I just think it's a nice way you can cook what other people want or you can try something new. Um, like I personally, I really like eating plant-based foods. I'm not vegetarian or anything. I do eat meat, but I like trying tofu and tempeh and stuff like that. Um, and my family's not really big into that, but when I do cook, I'll try and make a plant-based meal. And then, so that's something that my family would never make themselves, but when I make them, they end up enjoying it. Um, so I just like the flexibility that um, is there when you're doing the cooking. When I was doing research on cooking, one thing that I came across, which I didn't actually know, was that um, cooking engages your senses, which makes sense. I had just never really thought about it. Um, so it actually has the ability to activate memories is one thing that I found. So the smell of a specific meal um, could remind you of something like a friend's house or your grandma's house, something that somebody used to make. So you're relating that to like a memory. Um, and then that, I mean, depending on the memory, but oftentimes when you're thinking of your grandma's house, it's going to be a good memory. So that's going to make you feel good. And I also came across um, an article about aromatherapy and cooking. So this is something that I'd never really thought about. Um, so it's just gave some examples of some household ingredients that you might have that you can incorporate into cooking. And it's um, shown to kind of improve things like sleep, uh, mood, stress release, stuff like that. So two ingredients for stress relief were lavender and sage. So just incorporating that into any of the meals and the aroma that comes from the cooking can help to reduce your stress. And then I found that for sleep aid, uh, lavender as well, and also chamomile. And then for mood elevators, mint and basil are also really good for that. And I also found that some foods um, that link to stress relief are turkey, walnuts, sweet potatoes, almonds, spinach, and salmon. So I guess all of those foods, just eating them can help to reduce your stress. And one other big thing, because I know that a lot of people look at cooking as a chore, like if you go to school all day or if you go to work all day, you come home and the last thing you want to do is cook. Um, but cooking, if you look at it in a different perspective, it's actually a way to gain control in one specific area of your life. So for example, if you have a stressful day at work or at school, um, you come home and you have the ability to control what you're cooking and control what you're eating. So it's a good way to kind of give you that control back in your life. History on cooking was something that there wasn't a ton of information on when looking it up because cooking, it's just, it's one of those common sense things. We need food to survive. So it's kind of implied that a long, long time ago, people figured out how to cook. They figured out how to feed themselves. I did find one article about the history of cooking. So it said uh, that the exact origins of cooking are unknown, but at some point, a long, long time ago, early humans discovered fire and started using it to prepare their food. And researchers have found what appears to be the remains of campfires made one and a half million years ago, um, which would have been made by the early human species. So that's when they figure that humans started to figure out you can cook over a fire. And the very first method of cooking uh, was roasting. So they would put like a fish or bird meat just on the end of a stick and just roast it over an open fire. 
And one thing that I also really like about cooking is that it doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to make super complex, um, fancy recipes like grilled cheese is cooking, making eggs is cooking, toast, stuff like that. Um, so there's so many different forms and different ways of cooking. Um, so it's kind of possible for everybody to do. So the photo that was just shown in the previous slide is something that I actually made earlier tonight for dinner. Um, so those were summer rolls with just tempeh vegetables and then a spicy peanut sauce. So that's something that I've never made before. Um, and it wasn't a full meal, obviously, um, just kind of like a little snack. And then we just had some, me and my parents had some leftovers along with it. Um, but that was something fun for me. I've never made anything like that. I've never used rice paper rolls. So that was kind of cool. Um, and that was a plant-based meal. So there wasn't any meat in it. Um, there was tempeh instead, so that was the protein, and it ended up being really good. That last picture there, that was a soup that I made a couple weeks ago. Um, that was my first time ever making soup. It was a really simple recipe. It didn't have much in it, just some vegetables, uh, chickpeas, and lentil pasta. There wasn't meat or anything. Um, and it was really good. So I think I'll probably make soup again in the future. That last photo there, I made that over the summer. Um, and that was one of the more prettier meals I made with some nice presentation. It was a sushi bowl. So it had some rice, um, stuff like edamame, uh, avocado, cucumbers, I think carrots, and then I also had uh, some crab meat, and then I made like a spicy mayo to put on top. Um, so it just kind of tasted like sushi, and it was really good. There's lots of different forms of cooking, lots of different methods of doing it. So like I'd mentioned, the first form of cooking was roasting, um, back when they just roasted food over the fire. Um, but today there's lots more kinds. So there's baking, frying, grilling, steaming, poaching, simmering, broiling. Those are just a few. There's lots. Um, so yeah, there's just lots of different ways of doing it. Another great thing about cooking, um, in my opinion, is that it makes you more aware and more observant of what you're eating. So when you're doing the one cooking, you are looking at all the ingredients, you're putting it all together. Um, so it just makes you more aware of the food that you're putting into your body. And obviously healthy eating is huge and very important um, for a healthy lifestyle. Um, not always important. Of course, you can eat unhealthy from time to time, but I just think it's nice being able to look at the food and it's kind of gives you more of an understanding of different foods and what they do to your body, the impacts, stuff like that. Another thing that came up in my research that I wanted to include was I saw a lot about cooking through the pandemic and how a lot of people have been cooking and baking a ton. Um, and a huge reason for this is people are stuck at home, they're bored, there's not much else to do. And also a lot of people rely on going out to restaurants a couple days a week for food, which they can't do now that they're all closed. So people are being forced to cook. Um, and I think that kind of says a lot about what it can do for your mental health. Clearly people are at home bored, have nothing to do. So that's kind of one thing that's always available to them is making themselves food. Um, I know personally, I did a lot of baking at the beginning of lockdown in the spring. Um, my sister did as well. She's never really been into baking or cooking, but she was baking bread and stuff like that, stuff we've never really made. Um, so that just kind of goes to show that it can help improve mental health and relieve stress and boredom, stuff like that. So it's definitely a good tool to have, I think. One thing that I've seen a lot of on my social media, and I think part of it is just because it's kind of trendy right now, is meal prepping, especially with like health and fitness, uh, meal prepping healthy meals for the week. So I was looking up um, some tips and recipes for beginners, people that just getting into cooking, some easy things. And a lot of the ones that showed up were meal prepping. Um, and I actually have done this before. I really like meal prepping where it's called like a one pan meal prep. Um, so it would be something like chicken breast, a vegetable, and then maybe like a potato or something. And you put it all on the same little sheet pan um, season it, do whatever to it, and then just put it in the oven. It all cooks for the same amount of time. And then you just put it out, you put it into individual containers, and then you have lunches or dinners for the week. So that's um, a really good idea for people just kind of getting into cooking. It's easy, it's not a lot of dishes, it's pretty simple and quick. So that's a good idea um, for beginners. 
So generally there are kind of basics when it comes to cooking, just some things that kind of everybody should know how to cook. Um, and if you're beginning, if you're just starting out, these are kind of good places to start. So something just as simple as a chicken breast, just having kind of a recipe down, knowing how you like to spice it, how long it goes in the oven for, um, stuff like that. And then with chicken, you can do so many things. You can put it in pasta, you can do it uh, like a stir fry, um, sandwiches, really anything. So, um, and those two are other things, stir fries and pasta. I actually came across those when I was looking those up. Those are two pretty simple recipes. You can make them complex, but you can also just keep them simple. Um, so those are good meals for people who are just getting started with cooking to give a go and try it. So overall, I really enjoy cooking because again, it helps me to relieve a lot of stress by really forcing me to put out any distractions going on around me and just really focus on what I'm doing. So it keeps my mind from wandering. It keeps me from thinking about anything that could potentially be stressing me out. Um, so I've always really liked cooking for that reason. And I think it's fun to try new recipes and cook new things. Um, and so hopefully after this presentation, some more people might want to try cooking.